Welcome everyone to the Tuesday, October 18th, 2011 broadcast of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Aaron Dyke sitting in again for Alex. While he's still out on assignment, he'll be back later this week. We have a jam-packed broadcast tonight. Coming up, we have Russell Means, the chief facilitator of the Republic of Lakota, with an update on his personal health struggles, as well as the wider conspiracy within the cancer industry. And then after that, Alex Jones himself joins us via Skype for an update on a number of issues, including the fast and furious scandal that continues to unfold. In the news, we do have Attorney General Eric Holder continuing to dodge questions in relation to the investigation of Fast and Furious, now denying to answer as to whether or not there was a third gun involved in the shooting of border agent Brian Terry. Meanwhile, he accuses Issa of mischaracterizing evidence in the probe of Operation Fast and Furious uh, in relation to that potential third weapon. Meanwhile, Issa himself has had to acknowledge that the Bush administration had its own prior version of Fast and Furious nearly identical in which it shipped weapons uh, south. Feds traffic guns to suspected criminals under Bush, Paul Joseph Watson writes. The ATF allowed firearms to walk under previous incarnation of Fast and Furious. Daryl Issa told CBS's Face the Nation that we know that under the Bush administration, there were similar operations, but they were coordinated with Mexico. They made every effort to keep their eyes on the weapons the whole time. So we're not per se saying that gun trafficking, I mean tracing weapons, is a bad idea. He said that on October 16, 2011. Let's go to that clip right now. And again, we know that under the Bush administration, there were similar operations, but they were coordinated with Mexico. Uh, they made every effort to keep their eyes on the weapons the whole time. So we're not per se saying that tracing weapons is a bad okay. idea. Uh, well, Cheryl, uh, what, do you, what do you make of this? This whole scandal is really part of the black ops underside of what the government's been doing for decades and decades. There's a reason why it has so many similarities to the Iran-Contra scandal where they smuggled weapons to various uh, operations south of the border in return for shipping in drugs so they could support black ops around the world as they continue to do here. In this particular case, they're using the drug cartels as a smokescreen, as a pretext for a wider border operation, including parts of the North American Union agenda, as well as, of course, to demonize the Second Amendment. Uh, I just thought I would bring into the conversation a quote from Zvigny Brzezinski, one of the top globalists, in his book, Between Two Ages. He writes that a characteristic feature of concentrated humanity is the routinization of conflict. Direct violence becomes increasingly regulated and restricted and ultimately comes to be considered a deviation from the norm. Organized mechanisms in the form of uniform, salaried personnel are established to confine violence to socially tolerable limits. A certain measure of crime, however, is accepted as unavoidable. For the sake of order, therefore, organized crime is generally preferred to anarchic, vi anarchic violence, thus indirectly and informally becoming an extension of the order. That's right. He wrote in the 70s about how organized crime is part of the larger order, the New World Order, the world government who are running things today. Just very interesting to put into perspective. Now, in other news, there's a piece that's come out of the BBC uh, from a government think tank front group, uh, actually a Marxist group, called Demos. And they're sort of re-educating and brainwashing children that they can't believe things they read on the Internet, particularly targeting conspiracy theories and trying to train them that only government-issued information, official information, is trustworthy. Uh, that headline is government front group vows to abolish critical thinking marxist founded demos is terrified that children are questioning the establishment let's play part of that clip right now teachers are increasingly finding that their pupils are bringing into the classroom uh, conspiracy theories misinformation propaganda that they found on the internet and what i think that means is that young people aren't really being taught enough about how to critically assess and evaluate the information that they're finding online. Demos want digital judgment to be a core part of the curriculum. They say teachers need the training and resources to do that. And this is an attempt just to keep the big lie under wraps, not only uh, in regards to 9-11, 
course, you can see the rest of that clip on Infowars.com. Uh, they have people talking about various aspects of the 9-11 conspiracy theory that they supposedly read online that they're trying to train them isn't trustworthy. It applies to all sorts of information, and it really relates directly to the kinds of things that Obama's information czar, Cass Sunstein, wrote about in his white paper, Conspiracy Theories, where he directly advo advocates infiltrating conspiracy groups in trying to undermine the information, which he admits is very significant and poses a threat to the establishment. Uh, that's because free-thinking people can figure out that a big lie is just that, but they want to try to indoctrinate, especially the youth, uh, to not respect that information and begin to believe the establishment once again. Uh, now you've seen textbooks kind of teaching the official version of 9-11, and we've even had reports that children as young as first grade are being taught the official version of 9-11 in the classroom, a very traumatic event, uh, which has a big impact being taught to them really as early as possible. Uh, so we want to keep an eye on that. We're going to cover it more tomorrow. Uh, but Cash Sunstein directly wrote this quote right here. Our principal claim here involves the potential value of cognitive infiltration of extremist groups designed to introduce informational diversity into such groups and to expose indefensible conspiracy theories as such. Uh, obviously, it has nothing to do with the validity of various claims. Of course, not everything uh, that falls under the conspiracy theory category is true, but they're obviously trying to prop up propaganda. We want to remind you about the November 3rd money bomb. Uh, the InfoWars is launching another effort to help support our operation and spread the word. We're, of course, not corporate funded. There it is, November 3rd, 2011. Alex is going to do another marathon, 24-hour broadcast. Uh, including many special guests and pre-recorded interviews as well. So we hope you'll join him, help support the Infowar, and of course, uh, spread the word about this broadcast. We'll be back in a moment with more uh, news information and two powerful interviews after this break. Stay tuned for the Infowar. This is a test of the emergency alert system. Executive Order 10,995 allows the government to seize and control the communication media. Our nation is at war against a far-reaching network of violence and hatred. Training camps have been struck, leaders eliminated, plots disrupted. And all those involved in the attempted act of terrorism must, must know you too will be held to account. Think about it. Fifteen years ago, we allowed the federal government to hardwire emergency takeover systems of all major communications and media in the United States. Now the federal government's coming out in the open and admitting what was already in their internal documents, that they're going to begin having federal break-ins over local news. And that is, of course, a short clip from a much longer YouTube video Alex shot back in February 2011. It's up on the YouTube channel as long as they don't take it down down we have been under attack it's called obama launches total takeover of media and we are talking about new emergency alert systems which fema plans to test november 9th nationally for the first time ever and kurt nemo writes extensively about how that is linked to larger martial law takeover plans even as it may seem rather innocuous it is part of the quote civil takeover under Reagan, FEMA mutated civil defense planning into a military police version of civil society, a plan on collision course with posse comitatus. The new national EAS system is designed for a more significant event that conforms to the implementation of martial law as envisioned under garden plot and cable splicer, a plan nearly revealed when Representative Jack Brooks of Texas grilled Oliver North during the Iran-Contra hearings of 1987. And there is, of course, a much, much larger continuity of government takeover plan, uh, which they want to do as softly as possible. They don't want to scare everyone. They want to make it seem quite normal. It's also covered extensively in the powerful film Police State 4, released in April 2010. Uh, in other news, more than 20 radioactive hotspots have now been identified in Tokyo. And, of course, they were identified by independent citizens using Geiger counters long before it was admitted by the government, who continue to deny and obfuscate all the dangerous things going on in the continued Fukushima fallout. Uh, that was Washington's blog reporting on the New York Times. Radioactive substances are entering people's bodies from the air, from the food. It's everywhere, said Kiyoshi Toto, a radiation expert at Nagasaki University's 
Faculty of Environmental Studies, but the government doesn't even try to inform the public how much radiation they're exposed to. That is an understatement. And the article goes on to discuss how of 132 areas tested uh, near Tokyo and the uh, other similar cities, 22 were above Chernobyl levels, which were considered contaminated. Uh, just discussing, and you've heard from other sources how as many as 30 million people are, who are able to have evacuated Tokyo uh, because people know what's going on even as the government continues to deny and refuse to warn people as they should. In other news of how government can't and won't protect you, LAPD's SWAT guns were stolen. Uh, police officials confirmed that more than 30 firearms stored overnight at a building uh, considered secure were stolen. It's embarrassing. A lesson learned, they said. Uh, but, of course, all these authorities just want to appear to be, uh, you know, omnipotent when, of course, they are not. Similarly, Obama's teleprompter and lots of other communications equipment were stolen by thieves in a truck, uh, just more revealing how the Wizard of Oz is just a man behind the curtain, that the president is nothing more than a puppet. What, of course, will he say without his teleprompter? InfoWars Nightly News remains teleprompter-free, even though it has its occasional technical errors. Now, nearly a third of Occupy protesters have been found in a poll to advocate violence. Uh, that is a PSB polling firm uh, who spoke to, I believe, a 200 or more people who supported uh, concentrating force into the hands of government and who specifically supported using violence to enforce their ideas. Uh, nearly one-third, 31 percent, said they would support violence to advance their agenda. And that really is the definition of socialism, uh, using force to uh, implement uh, we have a clip now from Adam Kokesh uh, that just reiterates this. He's been speaking, of course, to Occupy protesters all across the country and particularly in the D.C. area. Let's go to that now. To make them pay for things that they don't want. I think that the threat of forces can be separated from violence. But is the threat of force any more morally acceptable? Yes, I believe it can. So, thre so threatening force is okay, but actually carrying out force is not okay? Um, that depends on the context. So threatening force is okay if... Um, for example, if uh, a, a crime were about to take place and I threatened force and it prevented the crime from taking place, that would be a justification for the use of force. I'm an IRS agent and I'm threatening to put you in a cage if you don't give me 30% of your income. Is that a justified threat of force? Yes. That is a scary, dangerous, anti-freedom, violent care. idea. <laughs> And there's a longer clip you could see up at Infowars.com uh, where he talks extensively to this man. But it really speaks for itself to say an IRS agent putting a gun to your head uh, is acceptable for the public good, for the greater good. Uh, and other related news to the Occupy Wall Street movement that continues, Obama has essentially failed in his attempt to use the Occupy Wall Street as a diversionary smokescreen and a buoy for his 2012 election, a poll conducted and reported on at the Hill finds that a, pro a plurality believe the Occupy Wall Street movement will actually hurt Democrats and Obama in the 2012 election, even as they try to co-opt the energy of that movement. More than 7 in 10 conservatives blame Wall uh, Washington for the recession, while more than 5 in 10 liberals blame Wall Street. As much as Wall Street is to blame for so much of the, constru uh, of the corruption, going on, and particularly the big six mega banks who operate with the Federal Reserve, Washington itself is completely corrupt, and everyone in the country knows it. There's massive righteous anger about it, and Obama is continuing to sink in the polls. Uh, in just a moment, we're going to go to a clip from Russell Means that we recorded back in November 2010 uh, there on the Pine Ridge uh, Reservation, the famous place where the massacre took place. And after that, we'll speak to Russell Means himself on his health and other related medical issues. Stay tuned. The Social Security system that everyone born and has to have a Social Security number or you can't get anything. In fact, your parents can even go to jail if they don't get you a social security number. Now with the Indians, not only do we have a social security number for that area of indebtedness, but <clears throat> our reservation and all its value, including the people on it, not only are we indebted on the social security number bit, but we're also featuring the state attorney general 
of the state of South Dakota and all the other states that have Indian reservations. They trade that reservation and the value of that reservation and the value of its people, the value of its air, the value of its carbon emissions are traded on Wall Street and Dun and Brad through Dun and Brad Street. It's listed. This value is put into financial instruments that are packaged and repackaged, just like the real estate fiasco. So we haven't even hit on all the swindles that Wall Street is visiting upon the people of America. You're nothing but a bunch of coupons for the United States government and the people who run it. That's it. American people, you're a commodity and you don't deserve anything else. And they're going to make sure you continue to be a commodity as long as the empire exists. As long as you allow the Constitution to be raped. This, uh, this land now filled with Indians that are absolutely dependent on the government for everything. For everything! At any rate, you depend on the government, and what you'll end up with is poverty and a lot of paper. Because everything you do, the government requires a lot of paper. You have to fill out a lot of forms. Then they have to fill out a lot of forms. And then they go up to the next level of government. They got to fill out a lot of forms. And by the time it gets to where it's supposed to go, nothing happens. We have government health here. Our life expectancy, if you, if you don't count AIDS, is the lowest in the world. Here. We are worse off than people in Haiti. Not only physically, but of the heart, our spirit, our reason to live. No, you don't want the government taking care of you. I do not speak untruths. Our land held in trust by the federal government, so we can't get loans. So we can't get businesses. That's some more paperwork you have to apply for. Our casino? The money goes first to the Bureau of Indian Affairs, then we have to write proposals to utilize the money. It's a never-ending cycle of poverty, dependency on the government. And in order for you to get ahead, you have to be like a congressman. You have to take bribes. You have to steal money, taxpayers' money. So America is no different than this Indian reservation. You're dependent on the government now, and you're getting what you deserve. But every time you try to get away from the government, they'll kill you. I put you in prison. Or let you become an American. <laughs> if you catch my drift. Because you're the new Indian. You're the new American Indian. Congratulations. Welcome to the club. But this land is beautiful. It belongs to us. We should learn to take care of it by fighting for her. 
She's worth it. And so are we. And the interview you just saw was filmed last year in November at Pine Ridge in South Dakota, where Russell resides. We're joined now by Russell Means. He is the chief facilitator for the Republic of Lakota. He's also an, a longtime activist and also an author, a philosopher, and has many other roles as well. Russell, we really thank you for joining us. And thank you for having me. Now, I understand there's quite a few topics you wanted to get into. Uh, what would you like to cover first, sir? Well, I understand there are worldwide, and especially in the United States, a lot of people interested in my health conditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you could please tell us, uh, you know, what you've been facing and, and what the outlook is, sir. Well, I really didn't know how serious it was until last week when uh, one of my doctors in this alternative health facility in Scottsdale, Arizona, he showed me my scan when I first came in in August, and then uh, the scan taken last Monday of my cancer that was in my throat, lymph nodes, on my tongue, and in my lungs, where it had spread. And I was literally days away from uh, my windpipe being closed off by the um, growth in my, the tumor in my throat. When I saw that, and he told me I was, you know, days away from uh, death's door, I, uh, because I had not opted for any of the uh, standard procedures they do to treat cancer, you know, they poison you, it's, 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 a, it's a racket. They make sure you're gonna die anyway. So I, uh, I, I chose alternative methodology, not only from uh, the alternative center, the only one in the United States that is alternative cancer treatment. I come to find out that uh, only three states allow alternative cancer treatments. That's Nevada, Utah, and Arizona, and there's only one alternative cancer treatment center, and that's in Scottsdale, Arizona. So my wife found it, and we came here, and last week when I found out I was literally at death's door, it blew me away. Then he showed me my scan from last week, and because of the medicines I've been taking that are from my own indigenous peoples and from the uh, alternative center here in Scottsdale, and the tomo therapy I've been going through, I uh, about ninety percent, about over ninety-five percent of my throat's clear now. The lymph nodes are clear. The throat is clear. The lungs are partially clear, but there's quite a few uh, still small uh, spots of of cancer in my lungs. The TOMO treatment cannot be continued in my lungs because of the sensitive nature of the tissues in there. So consequently, it's totally on my Indian medicines. Now, what has transpired, and, and this is what the doctors have said, and they use the word flabbergasted. They're flabbergasted at my, my uh, progress and my improvement. I consider myself anywhere from 80 to 90 percent cancer free, I believe, and I, I believe the doctors that say 21 more treatments and I will be cancer free. I will have defeated the Columbus legacy. And uh, it feels good, by the way, to let your audience know to defeat Columbus once and for all. Um, at any rate, I, I have come to find out just how illegal it is in this country to cure cancer. Because what I have found out, I've had to smuggle in indigenous uh, medicines from Mexico and Canada. And I've had, uh, of course, it's illegal 
like I say, in 47 states to treat cancer in an alternative way. The, it's against the law to import alternative cancer treatments and scientific cancer treatments. You know, uh, when Michael Douglas had cancer of the throat, same thing I had, he went to Germany and was cured. Germany has essentially eradicated cancer, but none of that technology is allowed in the United States. It's against the law. You can't import, as I've stated already, alternative cancer treatments across the, the borders of Mexico, any borders. Uh, on the, into the United States. The cancer treatments they give you, which is uh, radiation and chemotherapy, you know, the radiation kills the good cells, more good cells than it does cancer cells. Consequently, it re weakens your immune system and it makes you even more susceptible for more cancer and other illnesses that eventually kill you. It's a pure racket, money-making racket in this country. And, you know, I know that most of the audiences of Alex uh, are already sophisticated enough to know that the medical industry is nothing more than, than a racket. But to become face-to-face -face with it and to realize how immense and thorough this racket is, you know, they, they designed to kill you in this country with their alleged medicines, because no matter what you do with those medicines, it weakens your immune system. Prior to being diagnosed with cancer, I had defeated, I had thrown away all my meds. I, I cured myself through diet and exercise of diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, high cholesterol, hypertension, and gout. All those meds I threw away and I thought I was disease free, and then the next thing that hits me is cancer. So now I'm going to be cancer free uh, shortly here. And I just want people to understand the depth and the evilness of the medical industry. And I'll tell you some of the arithmetics of it. This Tomo laser type machine that targets only the bad cancer cells. It beams in there, it beams in there into your body, and it only kills bad cancer cells. None of the good cells like radiation does. Problem is, it takes a couple of days for each patient to be programmed in this Tomo machine. Then, and, and during that two days, it only takes an hour to program a radiation machine. So you see that radiation that hits you kills the good, more good cells than bad cancer cells, weakening you. But the point is, you make money. You know, you're a doctor. If he chooses just radiation, he can make in two days with one hour of, of programming, he can make over a million dollars, over a million dollars, up to 1.6 million. Off, off of cancer patients. But with a Tomo machine, in that two days, you can only do one patient. That's about $100,000. So which, as a doctor, which way are you going to go? Well, there's only one active Tomo machine going on in the country and only one doctor fully cognizant and fully uh, expertise at running this Tomo therapy machine. So I, I find it abhorrent that we in America do nothing for ourselves. It's, it's just ongoing politically, medically, health-wise, environmental-wise, economic-wise. We, we do nothing to stop the Erebus and the outright subjugation of the people of this country. It's, 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 it's become such an evil mess I don't understand how anyone can be a Democrat or a Republican or can salute the flag. I really don't. It's just mind-boggling how immense the evil in this country is. Making sure that you become obese, making sure that all of the foods you eat are poisoned, 
poisoned with GMO, poisoned with all kinds of additives to make sure that you become ill and so that the medical industry and the pharmaceutical industry and the other corporations can reap the benefits of your illnesses and your deaths. It's amazing. Well, we're very encouraged to hear that you are on the path to recovery. Uh, I know you asked for people to help out with donations. Tell us about where they could do that, sir. Well, it's very expensive. It uh, costs a couple thousand dollars uh, every month to, to stay in these places in, in Scottsdale. To, it's a rich neighborhood. So to, to find a decent place to stay, it costs, costs a couple thousand. And then a, a, over a thousand dollars a day for the uh, alternative treatments where they clean out your blood. They take out about a third of a quart of blood and they uh, extrapolate the heavy metals, the bad metals out of your blood and the toxins. And then they oxygenate your blood because cancer cells cannot stand oxygen. And they also put in the supplements necessary to rebuild your immune system so that disease cannot, any kind of disease can enter your body in your weakened state. So that's, uh, that's the big cost. My insurance is taking care of probably uh, about 90%, along with Medicare, taking care of about 90% of my tomotherapy. Nevertheless, it's still, we don't know the cost to that yet, but I do know that uh, $1,000 a day, it's, it really adds up quickly. And of course, I'm, I've exhausted my savings and the good people around the world have been sending in money from $5 to 500 So I, uh, I really appreciate that. We've had some large donations and you can send those to the Russell Means Healing Fund at 444 Crazy Horse Drive, Porcupine, South Dakota. P-O-R-C-U-P-I-N-E, Porcupine, 57772. Russell Means Healing Fund. And I know we have that information up on screen as well. Uh, now, Russell, I think there are a lot of people who are aware that chemotherapy treatments are very destructive, but at the same time, cancer is so epidemic, and when people are older and are faced with the cancer issue, I think they feel very desperate, as though there is no alternative. As you point out, there's very few centers uh, that even offer alternative treatment. But uh, how did cancer become so epidemic in the first place? Well, in the first place, it, it's, uh, it, it all goes to the weakening of your immune system. And, you know, not only as the foods that I've mentioned, you know, every food, even the foods that the vegetables that are imported are gassed so that they will be preserved and, they, and they're even gassed so they'll change color to make it look even more healthy. And, and then after they get here, they're sprayed again to keep them fresh. That's poison. But with all those additives and, uh, and, and GMO crops, with its, you know, it's, it's unbelievable that you poison a plant that you're going to eat so that it'll poison bugs that try to uh, feed off of it. It just, it just doesn't make sense. The, uh, then the further treatment, the treatment of chemotherapy and, and, and uh, radiation just destroys your immune system to invite any and every other kind. Now, when you get all this other health problems, if it's not cancer, then they give you the meds that cover up. And you've seen them advertised on TV. They tell you that they're bad for you. And, and it might even cause death. But they say, consult your doctor. Well, your doctor's part of the problem. Problem because he doesn't know any better. He does what he's taught and, and, and with the dollar bill dangling in front of his nose. Well, more than a dollar bill. But at any rate, all of that's conspiracy. And it is a, cons a living, breathing conspiracy. Because why would they outlaw alternative 
medicines and scientific medicines, the technology from Germany. Why is that outlawed? So you see, it speaks of itself. It's just an evil that keeps turning over and over and over and over. Yeah, well, I think a lot of people already understand the military industrial complex, uh, but maybe not as many people recognize, yeah, the pharmaceutical health industry complex that's built around it. And you have all these fun funds and foundations raising money for breast cancer awareness and the race to find a cure. Uh, but as you point out, they're not interested in the cure, Russell. Exactly. It, it's a, it's a, sh a, a shell game. You know, it, it grew from the carnival all the way into your, your, every aspect of your life, what you eat, how you live, what you breathe. And then when it all comes down to you want to get well, that's a conspiracy against you right there. So it's, it's almost so immense, it's not worth fighting. But it is, believe me, life is worth fighting for. Yeah. And we're, I don't know if you were able to follow while you were dealing with your own health issues. They've had raids against organic and raw food stores, uh, raids on lemonade stands, all from the same regulatory agencies that are in bed with Monsanto and the other GMO companies, ensuring that they get approved on the fast track status. Uh, have you been following some of those issues? Oh, very definitely. And that's, that's what enrages me even further is every place you look in this allegedly great country, you know, we got a document that, that is proof that this could be a great country, but it isn't. Ever since the 1840s when the corporate power was born, but that, I've gone through that with you on your program before, the historical abdication of our responsibility as free people. And it's, it, it's just ongoing. It's just ongoing. And now to watch the, the alleged political process, another fixed part of America, uh, you know, I don't understand the lack of the dearth of, of, uh, of, a, of a good man or a good woman coming forward to run for president and run for Congress. I just don't understand the lack thereof, the lack of organization, the lack of purpose. You know, after the last president and this current president, that should convince everyone that to be a demo publican is suicidal and that only an idiot would be a Democrat or a Republican. Only an idiot, someone whose mind has been so completely co-opted, he might as well not have one. And, and, and a third party should have been reborn already. Just this is just the last two presidents. And it now we have a, a president that's assassinating American citizens without any due process. Holy moly, and the guy is allegedly, that Negro in the White House is allegedly a lawyer, a constitutional lawyer. My God. And he's Harvard educated? Give me a break. Yeah, and those parties write the election laws, too. That's another part of the challenge. But you took a lot of heat for calling out Obama early on uh, after he'd been elected and early in his term just because you saw the advisors and the writing was on the wall. What do you think now after it's so obvious how bad things have gotten, all the people who attacked you, especially on the left? Well, all I know is that the presidents are interchangeable. They're anointed and appointed. And you don't become president unless you acquiesce to the powers that put you there. And so it doesn't matter who changes or what alleged party, because there's no party difference. The only party differences between a Democrat and a Republican is spending priorities. That's all. Because the, things, the same thing goes on. The, uh, the health industry is going to remain the same. The military industrial complex is going to remain the same. Look what they've done in the last 10 years to, to the American people. And the American people are bending over and walking backwards, not doing a damn thing to defend themselves. 
with the most important piece of paper in the history of the, of the patriarchal world, you know, and that's the Constitution of the United States of America. They got, a, they got the strongest weapon ever created, and yet the American people have abdicated their responsibility. And as I state over and over and over again, freedom is simply you are free to be responsible and to allow yourself to be murdered by your, by your corporations, allow yourself to be jailed by them, allow yourself to be imprisoned by them, allow yourself to be <coughs> homeless by them, allow yourself and your, your children to go off to war for them, it's, it's unconscionable. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, those are true words. Yeah, just take a moment, please. We know your health is still something in recovery. Um, you mentioned Obama assassinating people overseas, uh, American-born people. What do you think about him expanding wars even further, now reaching into Uganda and four other African countries, just on the heels of the Libyan action? <laughs> well, under Obama, it's the first time an American America has put bases in Africa. And this is before Libya. Mm -hmm. You know, it's under Obama. It's... Uh, you know, the uh, military bases around the world have doubled under Obama. There are over 1,400 now. There are probably over 1,500 military bases around the world. At the beginning of Bush's term, there was like 371 military bases around the world. So it's just grown exponentially, like a cancer. And <clears throat> that's what the only thing that is left in America is the riches because everything else has been exported and the only way an empire can in their final stages can continue to be an empire is through military means but just like the roman empire just like every empire before the united states as recently as the soviet union is that when you reach the point where all you've got left is the military, you eventually go broke. Well, the country's already broke. And we know, you and I know, that no later than February or March of next year, you know, there's going to be a 30% devaluation of the American dollar. So we're even going to become even more destitute as a country, as a population. So it's... Uh, this, this country's been emptied out. It's on everyone that has a brain knows this. It is now time for a, a revolution back to the principles of the Constitution. Otherwise, this country is dead in the water and will become a third world country very, very quickly. Yeah, well put, sir. Uh, now, of course, we have seen a righteous anger coming out of the Occupy Wall Street crowd, but it hasn't been uh, very con constitutionally articulated. Uh, what direction do you think that energy will go? Will it be absorbed by the two parties, or is this the beginning of a wider revolt of the American people? <coughs> Excuse me. You know, I, actually, I'm one of the most hopeful, optimistic people, I guess, among them, at any rate, because I'm really hoping that this is just the beginning and of, of being free again. Because if the American people become free, then my people will be free. And until that happened, my people have, have always had an uphill struggle uh, that some people have said is, is schizophrenic. But nevertheless, I do hope that this, uh, because some of the things that the uh, 99 percenters are saying is, is what uh, the Tea Party originated, originally was saying before it was taken over by the Koch brothers at, at all. Uh, I see that America has a glimmer of hope, and I just hope it, it, it doesn't end. I hope this continues in the groundswell and the importance of what is being said in all these uh, Occupy movements, because it's, it's such a disparate message, but it's a necessary message. It's a series of messages 
So we have to be able to articulate that into a one cohesive strategy. And I do believe it's, 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 it's gaining momentum and it's gaining, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm, I've got to believe it because I'm, I've got to be optimistic. I've got to believe in the Constitution. And uh, if that document isn't saved, then nothing will be saved and the, and the, the world will never change. Yes, sir. You've run as a Libertarian Party candidate, and now you have Ron Paul, also a true constitutionalist, uh, working within the Republican Party here in 2012. He's had a big impact, but at the same time, uh, the media has really orchestrated together to totally ignore him. Uh, what have your observations been about his campaign this time around? Well, this time around, I do know he has a little bit more money, and I know he's going to concentrate some of that, <clears throat> excuse me, in the early primaries. So I, um, I'm hoping that the uh, Occupy 99%, whatever they call themselves, recognize what Ron Paul is trying to say. I do believe, and I would encourage Ron to go to these occupied places as a presidential candidate and let them know what he's talking about. Um, it's in this day and age, he can get on their Facebooks, <coughs> excuse me, use some of that money he's got to, uh, to send a message out on, on all the Facebooks. It's, uh, it's not going to cost that much because the regular media has him. So I do believe Ron Paul is... If he doesn't get justice on this go around, I don't know anyone who can take his place because the man is experienced. The man has been true to his beliefs from day one. He doesn't compromise because he understands the Constitution of the United States of America. He's a responsible free man. And he understands the whole economic system that is crashing and burning. So we necessarily, you know, if you don't listen, if the 99 percenters don't listen to him, then they're a hollow movement. That's what I have to say. Ron Paul is so important in this, to this country right now. We better all get behind him. Nobody's perfect. And I'm not saying that. I'm just saying he's the only one in the existing system that can create, recreate the change that is needed. Yeah. Well, I have to agree with you. Is there anything else you'd like to add, sir? I would just like to uh, thank all the people who have prayed for me. I have gotten emails and snail mail from all around the world, from all the religious disciplines, from Israelis to Palestinians to Islamic Buddhists, Hindus, uh, all types of religions, Christians, Catholics, Protestants, you name it, and even agnostics. So I want to thank those people because I know prayer works. I'm, in, I'm not a part of any of those religions. I follow the, the spiritual ways of my ancestors, but I know prayer works, and I want to thank all those prayers. I would say this, can't you can't beat the prayers of the world, and neither can the despots. So let's work together. I think the Arab Spring taught us all a lesson, and let's continue what they started in Tahriri Square, you know, Tahriri Circle. So let's, let's continue that and free the world. I love it. Well, we thank you so much for joining us, and we are praying for you here at the broadcast. As you heard, Russell Means does need your support. Uh, we put up the page where you could support him financially, but he also needs your spiritual support as well. Uh, we're going to go to break right now, and we'll be back with Alex Jones via Skype.
for the rest of the InfoWars Nightly News broadcast. And finally tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, Alex Jones joins us again via Skype to give us an update on a host of issues, including the latest with Daryl Issa and Fast and Furious. Alex, thanks for joining us. Aaron, it's uh, great to be here, and I watched the show last night uh, after I was on in the retransmission. You're doing a great job, and so is the crew. They just uh, get more and more documentation, more and more graphics, more and more power-packed info every day. It's really exciting to be part of this. And again, I want to thank all the viewers out there and subscribers to InfoWarsNews.com and at PrisonPlanet.tv. Uh, we couldn't have done any of this without you, so you're standing right beside us. Uh, look, this is not... New news for viewers of this show. This is not new news uh, for uh, listeners of the radio show. In fact, let's multitask here right now. Uh, I'd like to ask Rob Du and the rest of the crew, if you just go back to last week when I covered Fast and Furious, I think three nights, I said, look at the government documents, look at the uh, federal court cases in Chicago and other areas with the Sinaloa drug cartel. And the U.S. government saying it's true and declaring national security. And you've got the proof of the big story here. And that is that this goes back to the Bush administration and that the gun running to Sinaloa went back to 2000 uh, and 2005 or five and a half, almost six years and that there was a deal where they were allowed to ship cocaine in, and then the ATF would ship them guns in uh, as long as they laundered their money through big Federal Reserve banks. And this has come out in court case after court case. Los Zetas was trained at Fort Benning, Georgia, and Fort Bragg. That's on record. We told people six years ago this whole war was about to start with the Federal Reserve banking system through the CIA funding the three major cartels and the other sub-cartels as a destabilization tactic. The globalists fund all sides of every conflict. So they've been caught arming Los Zetas that were trained in the U.S. They've been caught arming and allowing cocaine to be shipped in by Sinaloa. And in the federal court documents that have come out, uh, it, and it's now been confirmed, and this is in the El Paso Times, this is in uh, the Chicago Tribune, and, and the whole mainstream media knows that Fast and Furious is on the tip of the iceberg and that there were similar gun running programs uh, that went back uh, to Bush era. And so Issa came out today and Fox News and others covered it and said, listen, there were similar gun running, gun tracking programs under Bush. And so let's just leave it at that. We're going after Holder for perjury. They want to go after him for lying, just like Ken Starr went after Clinton uh, for petty issues, and just like Clinton got in trouble for uh, sex with an intern, because if they went after Clinton on any of the other issues, it was connected to the Republican leadership. So you can get it as early as last week, but you can go back six, seven months we're PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com. And I'm not tooting our horn. The point is we know what we're talking about. We're not just here shooting our mouths off. Where we said this goes back to Bush or even before, this is basically Iran-Contra two shipping guns into Latin America, into Honduras, into Mexico, into Tampa, into Indianapolis, into Chicago to drug gangs to enforce against drug gangs that are not in bed with the globalists. So this is a giant war over drugs and over who launders the money. Just like in 1999, you can find the Reuters article and photo of Richard Grasso, then head of the New York Stock Exchange, went to Columbia and met with the head of the FARC uh, and sit publicly because they actually have loophole laws where outside countries or individuals can actually invest drug money. It's all written where they, for the Federal Reserve can do this legally. It's so incredible. And he said, invest your money with the New York Stock Exchange, or you'll be invaded. And he said no. They were invaded one year later. A few years after that, they were able to bomb when he used a cell phone uh, and use a laser-guided uh, bomb into his cell phone off GPS and kill the head of the FARC. And that war is still ongoing. And they admit they have aircraft with crop sprayers with GPS that only spray the crops that aren't marked as laundering their stuff through U.S. banks. And they just spray the FARC coca. It's all about keeping the price up, okay? 
And so this is so huge. And so here's Daryl Lissa. Everybody's thinking Daryl Lissa uh, is, is going to bring down uh, Obama. And this should bring down Obama, but it can't because it will bring down the entire government. It will bring down the mega banks who've been caught laundering the money. And the reason I point out that we predicted all of this, we didn't predict it, we had the information. When Paul Watson wrote articles about it in February uh, from the court documents, is that people will probably get a Pulitzer Prize who've broken this information now. Uh, you know, they always break it after we do. And it just points out that they'll get a Pulitzer Prize for spinning it and mutating it and watering it down. That's why CBS News threw meat to the lions uh, going back over six months ago when this stuff started coming out in federal court, they made it about one outfit in Phoenix that was only one part of the operation where they ordered gun shops. And again, the feds came to me and ordered me to do something illegal. I wouldn't do it. But this shows how this criminality operates. They came and ordered the gun shops to, quote, sell to people that were coming in. That end of it was to blame the Second Amendment. The only thing new is that Obama piggybacked that on an already running Iran-Contra Fast and Furious 2 type uh, situation and was going to then blame the Second Amendment as an added goodie and blame everything in Mexico for it and have Mexico call for gun control, which they did last year before all this had come out. So they ran this false flag. They used their own destabilization program in Mexico with the cartels at each other's throats, all being funded by the big banks, the aircraft run by Wells Fargo, Wachovia, the list goes on and on, $376 billion laundered just by those two banks. They wanted to then use that quagmire and have Mexico go, restrict your Second Amendment. We're suing you. You owe us for what happened. And Mexico did that. So this mm -hmm. was all an elaborate scam. And now this has come out. And this is up there. Remember two weeks ago, I wrote the letter to uh, the Attorney General, Eric Holder, and said, look, I'm sure it was a mistake. Just admit you knew about the operation. You just didn't know the details because you've been caught lying. We're going to have to really go after you if you don't admit this. Come in and admit it. And I pointed out that Holder's like, go to hell. I can do whatever I want. This goes all the way back to Clinton and before. Uh, Bush is caught red-handed in this. You want to score political points with me, buddy boy? You're involved in this up to your eyeballs as well. Bush, Obama, puppets come and go. This is an organized global crime syndicate worldwide controlling narcotics. And all the war on drugs worldwide is a war on anybody trying to cultivate any naturally occurring plant that produces narcotics or, or, or other mood-altering uh, uh, systems in it. That's all this is, cut and dry, simple. And you can go back eight months ago, six months ago, you can go back last week to InfoWars Nightly News where I explained over and over and over and over and over again that Holder is sophisticated enough as a criminal to say, listen, you guys are involved in this. Don't try to get me to apologize or admit anything. We'll bring down the whole system. And so that's what's happening here. And this is the news item that has to get out to everybody because Republicans took the bait of obsessing over this fast and furious and admitting the government tried to blame it on the second amendment and oh my god it's a false flag now they've got to be forced to realize bush clinton it, it goes all the way back just like iran contra just like vietnam and and the and the the heroin inside the coffins that was confirmed this is hidden in plain view, just like the troops grow the opium in Afghanistan and ship it out. This is all a giant joke. Decriminalize it all now across the board. The crime will implode. The crime rates will go way down. Yeah, the criminals will start moving on to other things, but they're already doing that. The cartels are already expanding kidnapping and extortion. And the answer to that is the Second Amendment. Anybody tries to extort you, rob you, kill them. The answer is arm the Mexican people to protect themselves. The answer is freedom. Them, not less of it. This nightmare developed in a neo-feudal system that grew out of an ancient feudal system in Mesoamerica, then under the Spanish Empire, then under Maximilian and the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. It is a nightmare state down there with good, hardworking people in it, but the government and the overall culture has a huge streak of pure wickedness in it, and it's melded with these big mega banks, and they're planning to use the crisis, here's the rest of the story, to bring in their North American Union 
Security Prosperity Partnership and their Continental Security Perimeter. Four years ago in Endgame, we covered the fact that they would use a huge drug war in Mexico and revolution as a way to merge the countries. Now the federal government and Rick Perry and others <clears throat> are calling for the U.S. military to invade uh, uh, Mexico to, quote, you know, fix all this. That'll just open up a new Vietnam-style front, 40-plus thousand dead in just the last three years. That's way over the yearly death totals uh, in Vietnam, which was 58,000 over 10 years. We're talking 40-plus thousand in just three years. I mean, this is a big issue. And I was covering this years ago, and you couldn't get the media to even cover it. Uh, so this is how they're going to set up their whole North American Union is through this crisis. They just wanted to be able to organize the crisis and blame it on the Second Amendment. So the victory here is we exposed this fraud and blew it wide open. The problem is they've gone ahead with the executive level gun control against the gun shops outside of law that we've covered here. So it's a very sophisticated issue, uh, but uh, this goes right through the entire narco-terrorist, kleptocracy, private Federal Reserve government that we have here in this country. Yeah, I agree, Alex. And we covered last night the Merida Initiative that was set up officially in 2007, uh, right at the same time as Endgame, as you point out. And that set up the whole pretext of the Mexican drug gangs and the, quote, illegal flow of weapons uh, as a pretext for this larger North American Union agenda, Alex. And you've got uh, Calderon and Obama speaking about it at the SPP summits uh, as far back as 2009. But and they're not going to stop there. Please continue, Aaron. They, they, they also say they'll use economic crisis, drugs and guns, or the flu, or other bioweapon. So they'll just move on to the other tools now, but the jig is up. Notice when they staged this Iran thing last week and said we're going to war with them and lied and said this guy was doing all this stuff out of Corpus Christi, Texas. Within a day, hundreds of analysts came out and said it was fake. No one buys what they say anymore. No one buys that they really killed bin Laden and threw him in the ocean with the Easter Bunny. I'm sorry, go back to your points. Well, that's just it. It's outlined in the Merida Initiative and the actual SPP documents uh, that they're going to use this to merge, as you point out also on the radio, the law enforcement, using the military and the border agents and all of it to make it well, one big border zone. Exactly. That's why we've we, we've had the and extended the deadline on it because we didn't organize it very well. I didn't. Uh, the uh, Alex Jones prediction contest. It, because nothing wakes up brain dead sheeple like seeing me say something five years before it happens. And, and we need to show them, hey, it was always hidden in plain view about this. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm nothing special. I'm not a naive sucker schmuck, though. Our naivete doesn't protect us from evil. It allows it to grow. And it's time to stop being naive. So call all the talk radio stations. We need articles written about this. Get this video out to everybody you know and point out Fast and Furious is the tip of the iceberg. Fast and Furious could bring down the globalist. It could bring down the entire narco-terrorist drug-dealing state. In the information age, they can't even hide the fact that the government ships in the opium. So now they just publicly say the troops grow it, but that's okay. I mean, the CIA aircraft crashing full of pure cocaine from the source. Uh, they've got Homeland Security boats right here where I'm at going out every day picking the drugs up. I've talked to locals. It's like an 18-wheeler, you know, trains here. It's, it's just, it's all hidden in plain view. And then when the dumb public uses it, they throw you in the prisons owned by the big banks that launder the drug money. I mean, this is a globalist tax. So stop using illegal narcotics. Stop using Prozac over-the-counter or, or prescription. Stop using all their crap Ladies and gentlemen, get off all of it. Defeat them. Get healthy. Get out of their system. Now is the time. It's a joke. It's not cool to use drugs. It's shipped in by the globalists to enslave you. This is how modern slavery works. They put an addictive substance out when you're and push it on you. They have Hollywood sell it like it's sexy and cool because it's illegal. There's money associated with it. So disenfranchised people go for it. Then they put the poor in prisons for small amounts. They come out 10 years later with a college degree in crime and it creates creates a crime society. This is, this is how the globalists have demoralized us and destroyed us. It was all done systematically. It was always planned by these people. They knew exactly what they were doing, and they got gullible moralists uh, to, and condescending know-it-alls to play along with it who don't have full-spectrum analysis, understanding of the situation we're facing. And it's now coming down to the end game, and it's so transparent, it's 100% it's, it's clear in our face, and it's over. The joke is over. The condescending government wanting to search our cars at 
checkpoints for drugs is a joke. These are the drug dealers. These are the slave masters who put the, the substance out there and then hope they can catch you with it because they have a law making you a slave for five to 10 years in their private factory, their prison factory, if they catch you with what they put out on the ground. I mean, do you see the total setup of this? This is how they continue slavery. This is slavery. This is modern slavery. And it's just coming out that the government is really a bunch of gangster narcotics traffickers. And they've moved into child kidnapping. They've got the CPS running around, run by DynCor that runs child kidnapping worldwide and have been caught over and over again. It's so much more horrible than anybody can imagine because we think it's red, white, and blue and America's good. And ah, 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 Mexico's corrupt. No, Mexico's just got people so poor, they're fighting to the death over this money instead of having a real economy. I saw a USA Today article, no, San Antonio Express News yesterday, where it, it said drug, drug, drug business helps Texas economy. That's just an article about how drugs are helping us. I mean, it's so sick. No, it's not helping us. It sucks everything out of the real economy. It's incredible. Listen, Aaron, um, there's a lot of other news you covered today. Great job. I know uh, tomorrow on the radio you're going to be filling in, and I should call in for a segment or two as well. You've got some big guests coming up as well. But uh, here's an article at um, Infowars.com. Government front group vows to abolish critical thinking, and it's a literal admitted Marxist group with government funding teaching kids to only trust mainstream media and don't trust alternative media. I mean, it's just total brainwashing. Uh, it's all what Cass Sunstein talked about. It's just getting crazier and crazier, Aaron. Any, any comments here? Yeah, it's you know, the Cass Sunstein thing. He openly admitted that he wanted the government units to infiltrate conspiracy theorists, to undermine them. And now they have front groups uh, here in the BBC in the UK trying to convince children uh, not to believe what they see on the Internet and to only believe what little petty power tripping teachers tell them and uh, those who go along with the government propaganda, Alex. But this is the last desperate act of people that are being rendered obsolete. Uh, this is only going to make the children research more. <clears throat> what they should be saying is don't trust anything until you verified it and researched it for yourself. But they're afraid of the children opening up into that wider world. Who was it? Socrates? Which Greek philosopher was it who was thrown off the cliff, who was executed for corrupting the young? Uh, guys, look up Greek philosopher who was Aristotle, yeah. Did they make him drink poison or did they throw him off a cliff? I know they killed a bunch of them. You know, we think of the Greeks. Yeah, poison. I know they killed another one, throwing him off the cliff for that, for corrupting the young, they said. He was like, don't trust the mainstream media, don't trust the... So they killed him. I mean, this stuff is just ongoing. All right. Well, Aaron, I appreciate the incredible job you've done while I've been uh, reporting on the road down here. Uh, the YouTube hasn't shut our channel down. We showed uh, the Federal Reserve's request to pull the video down, but sometimes it takes them longer to pull something down. So we're not out of the woods yet on that, but that's certainly become a big story. And it caused a Streisand effect. Uh, whenever they tried to pull the video down where they admit the Federal Reserve is private and has only caused it to get hundreds of thousands more views uh, than it would have. And, of course, you know what the Streisand effect is, right, guys? No, I'm not familiar, Alex. Remember three years ago? They can put it on screen. Just Google the Streisand effect. She's this big liberal who wants to tax the rich and everything, uh, but she's got this giant palace that looks like it's something at Versailles or a Rothschild palace or Buckingham palace. Uh, there on the seacoast, and she tried to suppress photos of her home uh, in the media saying it was privacy. Well, the inside of your house is private, but not the facade of it. Uh, and it caused a lot more attention in the Streisand effect. Uh, me thinks you doth protest too much. Me thinks you, you protest too much. Exactly. Uh, I guess that's uh, Macbeth, isn't it? Um, but look, that's why the globalists don't want to kill me. They want to kill me politically. They want to kill my name. They want to demonize me with their COINTELPRO, their operatives attacking me 24-7 from every political angle, as Cass Sunstein said they would, because I'm here telling people they have power, showing them they have power, showing them history, showing them just how deep the evil goes so that they can really get incensed and wake up. So the system is trying to assassinate who I am individually. But they cannot assassinate the ideas. And because I'm willing to be assassinated politically and my name to be assassinated, it doesn't matter because the message gets out.
and in the end defeats them. Uh, and people more and more are, 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 are developing a palate or a taste and understanding of what's happening, and they see the giant attack as the confirmation of the fact that our works are good, our fruit is good. They understand that. And that's why so many more people are supporting InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com and spreading the word about what we're doing. And, 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 and folks know if the globalists kill me, it will only uh, cause a Streisand effect. It will, it will underline, highlight, uh, add 50 exclamation points, as I say, behind everything I do. I did have a call today, by the way, Aaron, we're going to follow up on. Uh, and I need to ask Do if he saw any of this. We're like 400 people there. And this fellow, Robert, I have his full name and number now. He says he has witnesses that are going to do a video and go to the Dallas police. The guy showed up and said, throw this canister at the fellow reserve and, he, and activate it with his cell phone if you're mad at him. And then he refused to do it so the guy started threatening him saying he was going to you know beat him up and then the guy said well i'll, I'll fight you and then the guy ran off and is now calling robert's cell phone threatening him definitely a fed i mean that is right out of central casting so we're going to see more and more of this folks we need your prayers we need your support because we are going right at the enemy here i mean we are really stepping it up to a new level well, all those things you said also go back to Cass Sunstein, you know, a top government think tank advisor. And the whole point of his paper on conspiracy theories, Alex, is admitting the effect that alternative information has that it could take down and challenge the establishment. That is the reason they're so desperate to undermine, quote, conspiracy theorists or really anyone thinking outside of the spoon-fed reality we're, we're told. That's why you see provocateurs. That's why you see them going to blogs and message boards, Alex. You see the Pentagon saying they're online attacking him. You see the, the Federal Reserve saying they're tracking everything in cyberspace and making an enemies list. The White House says, you know, Paul Watson says a BBC News report reflects uh, the group's panic, the government panic at conspiracy theories, i.e. any critical thought that questions the official consensus being brought into the classroom, brainwashing the children. We have state-run schools worldwide now in the West. I mean, what a joke. That's just fundamentally dangerous, centralized, federalized, forced inoculation, brainwashing centers. They're now going in and shooting the kids up without parental consent in California. The tyranny is here. It's happening. And now I'm seeing reports everywhere. We're having a view. Like if you say, I like my, my meat rare instead of medium, that's a conspiracy if they want you to have it medium. Uh, I, I mean, you know, people don't want to go through a checkpoint. They go, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. If you don't like war, you're a conspiracy theorist. They've now moved it to not just unorthodox information, but having your own political view. You're not allowed to hold that. That's a conspiracy theory. Having an individual spirit, an individual position, your own intellect, that is now a crime. That is now sacrilege. That is now a thought crime. I mean, this is, this is insane. This is like O'Brien torturing Winston in 1984, and he says, we could suspend the laws of gravity if we wanted to. And our, our scientists could come up with some baloney for that. And he said, we'll have, you know, other sciences that actually have gravity so we can, you know, navigate ships, but the public will still believe there's no gravity. And Winston's like, oh, my God, I see. And he's like, yes, you're right. I mean, they are just, they are tearing the minds apart right now. Yeah, it's the same as the quote of Jim Garrison in the JFK movie. That, yeah, a bunch of fancy white coat scientists could prove that one bullet could theoretically, you know, cause all those wounds. But what does common sense show? That's what it's all about at the end of the day. Well, look, the elite are, are getting into their own supply of BS here. I mean, they're destroying society. They're creating a civilization wrecking system. It's one thing to rationalize globalism and post-industrial world and how they're going to consolidate total power and change our civilization uh, and consolidate it. But the process isn't going to go how they thought it would, and it's not going to be pretty. And, 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 and they're not going to get run over by it themselves. But look, power elites always go crazy five, six, seven generations in. They usually don't even last that long. They, they subconsciously destroy themselves. They subconsciously, consciously they rationalize what they're doing. But subconsciously, like a serial killer who gets more and more reckless, they get more and more reckless wanting to be caught, wanting to be brought to justice. I mean, the U.S. government has built, I always said 36, because that's what they admitted to in 2002 the uh, BioShield program, they have built over 200 level four bioweapons labs with weaponized Ebola, weaponized smallpox. 
weaponized mousepox, stuff that kills 99% of those that come in contact with it. I mean, you're talking into the world stuff. And I've, it's admitted they've built them in level two facilities everywhere and have FedEx trucks driving them around everywhere and UPS. I, I mean, they are really trying. I mean, these people are crazy, man. They're crazy. Uh, I mean, what is the federal government doing funding all three of the major cartels, the other sub cartels with weapons and then having them kill each other? I mean, okay, divide and conquer. I mean, what what is that? So they could then try to merge the countries out of the crisis. I mean, it's it's just, it's madness. It, it, it is total madness. And I'm talking to those that are part of the establishment out there. We're starting to see some signs where you saw hundreds of analysts now come out and say this whole Iran thing was a crock of baloney last week. You know why? Because they care about their kids, folks. And this could cause World War III we've got a bunch of chutzpah, arrogance-filled, uh, bravado-filled, uh, macho-filled, uh, hubris, whatever you want to call it, people, who are going to destroy our planet and our future and all the wonderful life that's on it. I mean, you got globalists on power trips with all sorts of super weapons that make nuclear weapons look like a joke, underground bases for all of them, and they're crazy. And they're fiddling while our society burns. Aaron, go ahead and take us out for uh, Nightly News. And uh, I know you're doing both shows tomorrow, and then I'm back Thursday doing both. Great job of the crew. I've gone too long as usual. And great job of the earlier interview and everything you did. Uh, and uh, we're all in this together, folks. But history's happening right now. We're at the crossroads. Aaron, take it away. Thanks, Alex. And, of course, unfortunately, everything you say is devastatingly accurate. Well, obviously, we're going to continue to cover the Fast and Furious issue and everything else that's related to it. But for tonight, that's all for the InfoWars Nightly News. Stay tuned and spread the word about this broadcast. Thank you.